we are introducing this notation, this idea, right? This is the, um, this is the flip side of differentiation. It's integration. It's finding areas. That's the key, okay? That's the idea I need to help you understand. So let's have a look at these. It's easiest to, now let's step away from the astronaut for a minute. And let's think about what we're more used to dealing with, which is, you know, functions on a Cartesian plane, functions we actually know about, okay? So have a look at this one with me. This says, and the way I read this is, the integral from 4 to 8 of this function with respect to x. Right? Just like if I said to you, hey, what does that mean in comparison to, say, this? Right? This would mean, how is y changing as x changes with respect to x? This is, how is y changing with respect to r, right? Uh, if r was like our horizontal axis, okay? So here, when you read an integral, that's what this thing is called, an integral. This thing tells you what are you integrating with respect to, just like this tells you what are you differentiating with respect to, okay? From four to eight, well, I need to know what this thing looks like, right? This thing here is the equivalent of my velocity function, right? So here I had this weird object here. Well, I'm gonna draw this. This is actually really easy to draw. Uh, it's from, it goes down here. You'll see why in a second I haven't drawn that part. That's what y equals x minus 4 looks like. y equals x minus 4. Okay. Now, where do they want us to work out the area? Have a look. They want us to start at 4 and end at 8. Does that make sense? And that's why, in fact, I've only drawn the top half of this, because that spot right there is x equals 4. I can ignore this. And x equals 8 will be, well, on my graph, somewhere over there. So I'm trying to work out, just like I did here, and this is why I shaded it to communicate to you what was going on, and you should shade it too. I want to work out what is the area under this curve, this thing, between 4 and 8. Okay. Now, I don't, I don't think drawing triangles, sorry, drawing rectangles here makes sense, because um, I'm always going to have like holes and weird things, okay? But that's okay. It's an area, and it's another shape that I know, which is a triangle, okay? So can you tell me what the area of this triangle is? What's the, um, what's the formula for the area of a triangle? Half base times height. Half base times height. I'm thinking about that formula rather than say, uh, where did I go? This, this height times width formula because it's a different shape, right? What's the width of this, um, or the base rather, of this triangle? It's just going to be 4, right? A take away 4. What's the height? Also 4, because the gradient of this is just 1. So every time you go across one unit, you go up one unit. So 4. A half times 4 times 4. A half times 16 is 8. That's not that hard. This thing here looks very intimidating, right? The integral from 4 to 8 of x minus 4 with respect to x. But all it is is a number, OK? How about this one? What is this shape? What is this? This is a semicircle. Um, which kind of semicircle is it? Up, down, left, right? This is, a, this is, a, this is an up semicircle. It's the top half, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw it like that, like so. I've got a radius of, I should say, a center of the origin and a radius of 4. So that means conveniently, <laughs> I've got negative 4 to 4 there, right? So what is this integral asking? What is the area underneath the whole thing? Does that make sense? That's what this is asking. That's what integrals are requiring from you. So what's the area of a semicircle? It's a half times pi times r, which is 4 squared. There you go. Uh, I've got 16 divided by 2 again. That's 8. But I've got a pi, so that's 8 pi. Make sense? OK, so these objects that we're working with at the moment, they are called integrals because we are integrating, but they're a little more specific than that. You see how I've got a value up here and a value up here, right? So you start somewhere, you end somewhere, you actually get a number out the end. You get a number out the end. There's a definite value to these integrals. So therefore, we call these objects, where am I going to put it? Over here. 
We call these objects definite integrals. Because it's an integral, but you get a definite value at the end. It's not just some airy fairy function that can change and vary. It's 8, or it's 8 pi, or uh, whatever this one was, 160. Right? The integral from 1 to 3 of this function would be 160. Okay? So it's a definite value, so we call these objects definite integrals. Eric? What if you wanted like, the area under the curve, but it was 1 below the x axis? We'll come to those. We will come to those in time. Patience, young grasshopper. Okay, so um, one more thing, one more thing, and I'm just kind of teasing this, but I can't, I can't not show you. The textbook is like, oh, take your time, but I, I, I'm so excited, I cannot not show you this. Okay, this, I thought of this as an area problem, right? I thought of it as an area problem, but if this is really true, that I can think of this in terms of the primitive, then let's look at this problem again. Let's look at this problem again. Okay. I need a bit of space. I want to write out this thing here, but using, woo, um, clumsy, using this line here, okay? This whole primitive idea, okay? So I'm going to say that thing, the integral from 4 to 8 of x minus 4 dx equals, okay? I'm going to put in this weird box thing, okay? So this means whatever's in here, Work it out at the end value, which apparently is 8, and take that away from working out at the start value, which is 4. You see where I've got those numbers from? Okay. Now, the question is, well, what is the primitive of x minus 4? And you know what the primitive is, right? How did we find primitives back when we were doing this in geometrical applications and calculus? What do we do? Now, think carefully, right? Because the primitive is what happens when you undo differentiation, what did we call this process here, we called it anti-differentiation because you're undoing that, right? So the reason why we learned anti-differentiation is because it's at the core of integration. It's like tucked inside, okay? They're not the same thing. Integration is about calculating areas, but we can use anti-differentiation to find that, right? So what is the primitive of this thing? What, what, do you, what happens to this x? You raise its power, and then you divide by that new power, which is 2. What about the takeaway 4? Minus 4x. Now, the astute among you will notice, this is, not, this is not the primitive. It's just one of the primitives, right? I'm going to leave it to you to try and work out. In the next couple of days, we'll, I will show you if you can't work it out your own. I'm going to let you try and work out. Why do I not bother to put, what's the thing that's missing? Plus c. I don't put a plus c there. I'll let you have a think about it. If you're really sharp, you'll be able to work it out in about three minutes, OK? What does this mean again? It means chuck in your end value, chuck in your beginning value. What happens when I put in 8? I get 8 squared on 2, take away 4, lots of 8. Is that OK? That's what happens at 8. What happens at 4? Uh, 4 squared on 2, take away 4, lots of 4. Is that OK? Yes? OK, just help me crunch the numbers here. 64 on 2. 32, take away 32, huh, that's interesting, we'll come back to that in a second. Take away what? What's going on over here? 16 on 2 is, uh, sorry, I should just write 8 like you said, uh, 4 times 4 is, that's 0, that is negative 8, which sure enough is 8. Now, you're probably thinking, that was a lot of work. I could have just done the triangle and that would have been fine. Okay, that's true. When the curve, curve, just gives you a triangle. But guess what? You don't always get nice, neat triangles or semicircles. You get other things, which is really what this topic is about.